Oh, hey, what's happening there, Internet? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are going to be working on a new grinder project. That's right. Coming on the tail end of the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder that we just finished up. We've been working so hard the last couple of months on it, and you know what? I'm just crazy enough to go ahead and design yet another grinder. Now, this project is quite a bit smaller. It's not uh, as involved as the Revolution is. So uh, I felt like I could take it on and do kind of the same process that we did before, where I present an idea, I show it to you in my SketchUp file, and you can kind of check it out, see what you like, what you don't like, what you would add, what you might take away, and, and then we'll kind of uh, prototype it together. I'll make a couple of videos on that, and then we'll go ahead and actually build that grinder. And it's based off of the super inexpensive Bauer Harbor Freight Bauer brand angle grinder that you can buy for about $40. I went down last night and bought one so I could actually prototype this thing. Of course, they make uh, an additional seven inch pad. It's actually a backer that goes on there that you can add all different kinds of abrasives. And I purchased a flap wheel as well. So uh, we're gonna try all of those things out. And my goal for this project was to build a grinder that would sit on someone's bench that was easy to assemble using, of course, easy to source materials like tube steel and plate steel. It would be inexpensive to build, say sub maybe a hundred bucks, and it would be a good metalworking project, but at the same time be extremely useful. I have found myself needing just to polish something, grind something, take something down just really sh quickly, and I figured, you know what? If I had something like this, I wouldn't have to turn on my, my big grinders or go over to the actual bench grinders and things like that. If I had an angle grinder on a table that had an articulating work rest, similar to like the one that we built for the Revolution, then we would have a super versatile tool, say for sub 100 bucks, and it's kind of a fun project to put together. And a lot of us, including myself, have had angle grinders just kind of sitting around that you're not doing something with so you could modify my plan and make it work for your angle grinder just with some slight modifications of the spacers and such. Now let's take a closer look at the design. So this is it in a nutshell here. As you can see it's constructed out of easy to source tube steel and plate steel. I figured on this design we could get away with a quarter inch thick plate steel and the two inch here does not need to be quarter inch wall. It can be pretty much anything you've got lying around. I mean, you could modify this thing to use any kind of tube steel. It's just as what I had here. These particular pieces here are gonna need to be quarter inch because we're gonna be drilling and tapping into them. Uh, but uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty rudimentary design, but a super powerful, useful design. And this uh, work rest here, is based off of the exact same work rest that we put together for the Revolution, as you can see. So you've got the template for that. You can cut those, those out. And I'm not 100% sure if you need both sides to this. I was kind of wondering, is there a way to build this work rest where you don't have to cut two plates? And I'm interested to hear what your ideas are on the 45 articulation here because I'm pretty convinced that there's a better way to do this that doesn't require this much steel. And honestly, I just can't, my brain is having a hard time wrapping around it. And I've looked at other designs like more commercial designs and I can't seem to really find anything out there that makes sense for this type of application. So if you've got a better idea or something I could look at that would solve the problem of needing two pieces of plate here. Really what I'm trying to avoid is cutting these uh, C channels out, the 45 C channels. I still have yet to get my plasma CNC that's on its way from Langmere Systems. Their support team reached out to me after my last video and said, hey, you know, you've, you're on the second round of deliveries and it's in April, should be arriving. So that will take all of the hard work out of cutting these things out, but for now I can't do it. This grinding wheel here is just one I downloaded in SketchUp. This is uh, from the Trimble uh, community. So this is a four and a half inch grinding wheel. I will update that with a seven inch. I actually wasn't 100% sure that I could go seven inch until I went to Harbor Freight yesterday and found those seven inch, drive, uh, seven inch pads 
that they had there. So I'll need to update the drawing. Other than that though, you can see the versatility on this thing. The reason why the arm is so far down is because I want to be able to have this raise and lower based on the angle of the, the, the work rest here. Once you angle this up, you need to be able to drop it down slightly. So you need a, a piece of tube steel here that will accommodate that. And you've got to drop this down to make it all work. Now, I am not married to this particular design. So if you have a better concept and you have a better idea of how this can be done, please send it to me in the comments. I'm really interested in collaborating with you all on this project. I don't want to be the only brain trust involved in this. But yeah, for the most part, I think we can do it in one day. It's a one day build. Once the steel is cut and soaked in vinegar and etched, I think putting this together is going to be fairly simple. As far as the electronics go on this thing, you could just use the on off switch that's actually included on the angle grinder itself. I think the Bauer actually has like a paddle trigger that I'm going to need to zip tie down to make this happen. But for about 17 bucks, I was able to acquire one of these fan speed controllers, which I think is basically an SCR controller for 110. It's rated for 15 amps, so it's only about half of the amount of amps that my particular angle grinder is going to be utilizing. I think I could achieve a variable speed grinder with this. I don't know for sure, and this may fry out. It may fry the grinder. I don't really know, but I, I read a lot of the reviews on these things, and some people say they're great, and other people say they're junk. So I figure for 17 bucks, it's worth a shot. So here's the actual Harbor Freight Bauer style grinder that I picked up last night. And this is the seven inch flap wheel. I picked this up on Amazon. It's made by DeWalt. It's a 40 grit uh, beast. And you know what? It's, uh, it's really gonna be a beast, I think. I didn't realize how big this thing is. But you can see, <clears throat> yeah, that's gonna be really nice. Now, my one concern is this thing spins, I'm going to say clockwise, I think. Yeah, that makes sense, clockwise. So as it's sitting in inside of the table here, right, it's going to be spinning this way, right? And I'm actually considering not centering the notch in the table, but moving this over so the notch would actually be more on this side because I kind of want more table on this side. I don't think you'll actually be grinding on this side of the flap disc itself. I mean, it's it's going to be spinning this way and I can't, I'm, you know, in my mind I'm thinking if it's a flap disc, that's one thing. You can't really grind on this side, but if it's just a flat or say a polishing disc, I think you'd be all right to just use the entire thing. But for the flap side, you're really only going to be able to use, you know, from here on over. So by moving this entire work surface down slightly and moving the notch that way, so like say the table ends there, I think that sort of solves that problem. I don't know. If you've got any thoughts on that, just go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I also picked up this polishing and sanding kit from uh, Harbor Freight and it's got a whole bunch of uh, attachments on it and a hook and loop backer, which I thought made a lot of sense because if I create a different notch here for another, say, just a non-articulating work surface that would accommodate this, then you could actually polish spines on knives. I mean, there's probably a hundred different applications for this. so. Eh, I figured I'd give it a shot. If you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There are links down in the description that will take you to my Amazon store. Everything in my workshop is broken down into nice categories. And that is a free way to support my channel. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page now. For as little as $1 a month, you can support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. If you're not into using Patreon, you can literally buy me a coffee. I love coffee. Also, right below this video, there is a link to my Teespring store, and you can click down in there and you'll see a lineup of cool t-shirts and hoodies that have the housework logo on them, and that's another way to support my channel. I truly appreciate you watching and collaborating with everything I've got going on right here in my workshop, guys. I really do appreciate you. 
Thanks so much. Have an awesome day. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. <laughs>